Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host, Sri Ayer. Today I have a new guest and a returning guest. Savio Rodriguez is our returning guest, and Amit Bagaria is the new guest. And they too have authored a book. We are going to be talking about that, but the content of that book is amazing and it's revealing. I'd like all of you viewers to first like this video because there's a lot of stuff in this that's going to be new for most of you. And, and I've been saying this for the last eight, nine years now that it's one thing that uh, BJP is not very strong at. It is communicating what they've actually done. So here we go. Let's welcome our guests today, Amit Bagaria and Savio Rodriguez. Amit, Savio, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. How are you? Namaskar. You know, Sri, thank you for giving us time uh, this this evening, and I'm sure it's morning at your end in the US. Uh, so let me let me take you through what exactly happened. Uh, Amit and I, of course, as you would know, because we were interviewed by you itself, or Modi stole my mask when it was it was going on. Uh, we decided that there's been a lot of work that Prime Minister Modi and the Indian government has done over the last 10 years. But there's been so much of misinformation or little information and no uh, you know, focused approach to looking at the different areas of achievements and transformational policies that the Indian government has brought to under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi. That's when Amit and I, we decided to come together once again after our first book, Modi Stole My Mask, and uh, work out and try and see how best we could bring out that information through a book. Now, Amit and I will tell you, and Amit's, Amit's the person who's actually done considerable amount of the number crutching, and I'm telling you it's an honor to, to co-write, co-author with him. Because he has done a phenomenal work in, in with Modi Stole My Mask, and in this We've, we've been at it for over 100 days and almost 3,000 hours now and still counting, you know, because it's still going, right? But uh, we wanted, we started off to write the book and we thought we'd do about 50,000 odd words and it's gone more than double that amount of words. And then we wrote it in one particular way. Then we just, you know, we need to structure it in a different way so that it'd be easier for people to read. And that's why we got into tables. Amit got into the computation. That's that's something that he's very strong at. We started to do numbers and number crunching and analysis from all the research that we had gathered. And I can tell you without a doubt in my mind, because both Amit and you, Sri, and me are, are voracious readers, this is a work of art. This is a masterpiece. And if there is a main painter to this book, it is Amit Bagaria. I'm really the guy who's stroking paint around where he's telling me, please go ahead and draw and color it over here or color it over there. But phenomenal work. I mean, I would leave it to Amit now to, to take you through the book. Uh, Amit, welcome to our channel for the first time. And thank you so much for taking time out from your valuable schedule. I, I, I've had a chance to look at the book. Viewers, the title is still being finalized. so. It is out here. It is coming. It's coming very, very soon to a bookstore near you. Uh, I let Amit take over now and walk us through this process. I mean, the number of achievements, guys, is mind boggling, mind boggling. And I know Savio does not look at anything without data to back it up. So Amit, over to you. You have the floor, sir. Talk to us a little bit about this book, how it came about. And thank you once again for taking time out. Over to you. Thank you so much, Sri, for having me on the show. So I'm, I'm going to start with uh, three or four shocking facts. Uh, so first, I'll just comment on what Savio just said about the number of words. Actually, in our signed contract with the publisher, we've actually committed to 40,000 words. And then in uh, discussions with the publisher later, we said, OK, can we go up to 70,000? And he said, no more than 60,000. Right now, I have the manuscript open in front of me and it's one lakh eight thousand six hundred and eighteen words so let's see whether after seeing everything the publisher agrees to to do it or they're going to chop down further but the most shocking part is that actually uh, we had been planning to write another book you know like in the us 
you have debates between candidates who are running for an office right like a yes, president yes. or a governor or a mayor yes. so we thought we'll come up with a satirical book on a debate between narendra modi and rahul gandhi uh, and and the whole thing would have been you know based on a journalist asking them questions and them answering and obviously rahul's answers would have been very very funny uh, somehow we never got around to doing that project and then suddenly uh, somewhere around just before christmas savio came up with this idea and he said you know uh, i think it was just after the last episode of uh, man ki baat uh, in 2023 the last episode which was the 108th man ki baat so savio got the idea from there and he called me up and he said why don't we write a book 108 reasons to vote for modi so <laughs> you know both of us are modi fans and we've been following the prime minister closely but funnily enough i asked savio i said do we have 108 reasons so savio said yes i think we can come up with them so i said rahul why don't you make the list and and i'll see whether i add to it or or whatever so the first list that savio sent me had 96 reasons and some of the other i thought you know uh, this looked like a lot but i was able to add to that and come up to 108 so he said okay let's start we divided the 108 topics between each other and we started working on it uh within the first 20 days free we had gone up to if my memory serves me right from 108 we had gone up to about 1200 and uh, as as you know as time moved forward as i stand today and i'm going to submit the manuscript to the publisher later tonight she believe this or not i'm going to repeat it twice we have found 181512 achievements of modi 181512 <laughs> achievements in 10 years 10 years is not even over yet i mean it's 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 mind boggling you know i've been getting so much pressure from my daughter who's expecting a child in the next four weeks dad spend some time with me and i'm like i'm i'm totally lost in this data how do i spend time with you darling i will finish it before you know at least two weeks before you deliver and and you know i'm doing it four weeks before she delivers but uh like sarju said we had to restructure the whole book because all of it she was written in text and we said no this text is not going to be people are not going to be able to grasp the data in text so now most of the data is laid out in 100 tables in the book 100 tables uh, there are 145 chapters which have 100 tables and uh, you know we said oh my god how has he been able to do this in less than 10 years and you know the best part see the bjp just came out with the election manifesto right it's called modi's guarantees or whatever they came out with this document two days ago i read the entire document i'm so sorry sabio has read it also the data that they have in this document is 3 to 6 months old <laughs> so even the prime minister doesn't have his own data and you know like you said bjp's communications have been lousy in fact when sabio and i got a chance to meet the prime minister for 27 minutes in in august 2021 we told that to the prime minister and you know what he said he said main aapse sehmat ho ji <laughs> so he even is- like he he is like a karma yogi i have got this mission in life and i am going forward the rest will follow there there's a certain implicit faith that things will follow and lo and behold you to have come and said that here yeah, we document all the things that the modi government has done back to you yeah. yeah there are you know the government has you know there is one line in the book i'm going to disclose uh we've written in the book modi government is like sunny leon they expose everything the government has more than 340 portals and dashboards which which give the numbers most of them are updated many of them are updated on a daily basis uh majority are updated at least once a week and a few maybe less than 20% are updated once a month 
uh, and since since this data is available till you know a week ago i don't know whether you know how even the bjp didn't get the right numbers but but that's the reality 181512 achievements how is anyone you know how is the opposition even thinking of competing against this very true very true um one of the things that i would request is after you publish this book um publish a small book which is like you said about 340 portals right and have them like if you are looking for this 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 and and publish it in as many languages as possible this is like a booklet that people have to have it every day in their house and also there will be like a qr you will do this i know so that you scan on the qr code it automatically goes to that particular chapter yeah yeah so people start applying right away you believe me you if you do this thing you know why 400 542 seats will be going because you got to show what you did i mean you are busy Absolutely. doing a lot of things but uh, this is one of the uh, i think let's let's just say that he is focused on delivering and he's not worrying too much about how many things are told to people or not and that will follow so i have a question for you um sure. you know we in our conversation yesterday we were talking about this and we were saying okay so we uh, you 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 to spend a lot of midnight hours working on it because data you want you don't want to get even one comma or a, a full stop a period wrong it gives you times 10 kind of an impact so walk us through how you two work together here division of labor um, and it's it's always interesting to find out when two or three or people you know unite to write a book it's not easy and and walk us through how this uh, thing came about so you see shri one of the most uh, important aspects to the relationship between amit and i is that i see amit as a better writer than i am i also see amit as a better researcher and a better number uh, cruncher and 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 a, a analyst than i am so i allow for amit to take the lead while i'm i'm very good at accumulating data and finding out information and reaching out to people and also writing I think the real big brother in the entire uh, work that is done, and it is phenomenal, like I said earlier, that is because of Amit's direction. So Amit's very good at compartmentalizing the entire content that we have, the structure of the content, and like like a team lead, he puts it into a structure which I then follow and fill in the blanks into it. And that's been the working style. Like you know, I I was sharing this data on television the other day. and i'll tell you why it's important and why data is important because maybe amit and i can come out and and be very uh, verbose in what we are saying and the kind of language that we use and the kind of writing that we do but at the end of the day you have to look at data and data never lies as amit also says data never lies that's the factual thing let me give you one one a pain point sorry 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 for interrupting but beta beta always lies <laughs> <laughs> subtle difference <laughs> <laughs> i i don't think the uh, 50 year adolescent is going to like that and anyway we don't care so let me just give you a data so we looked at fake duplicate non existent ineligible uh you know uh, people that have got government benefits over the over the time when when uh, upa had been around and then of course the nda came into power So ration cards, how many fake and duplicates? Four hundred and forty-two million. Wow! Okay. Benami. One and two is a fake. You got like what? How did that happen? I mean, you have one point four billion, four hundred and forty-two million. Wow! Four hundred and forty-two million were fake ration cards. Benami bank accounts for fifty-two plus million. LPG connections, which were fake uh, again, for forty-three plus million. Narega job cards, right up till from uh, 2011 to 2014. How many were fake? 78.3 million. Beneficiaries in Women and Child Development Ministry, 9.88 million. Fake. Pan cards were 1.145 million. Fake pan cards. Beneficiaries in Rural Development Ministry, 1.084 million. Again, fake. Beneficiaries in National Social Assistance Program, seven lakh fifty-seven thousand two hundred. Scholarships, and we've gone down to minute details. Scholarships, 
seven lakh twenty thousand. Again, fake. Shell companies three lakh forty one thousand. Beneficiaries in social justice and empowerment ministry one lakh ninety eight thousand. And fake NGOs with FCRA license twenty six thousand seven hundred. Wow, black hole does exist, Savio. I mean. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, see what is the most important thing. What was the uh, outcome of these fakes? The outcome of these fakes, uh, frankly, I would be wrong if I say that we exactly calculated it. But a rough, rough calculation is that it was around in those days. It was around fourteen lakh crore. 14 lakh crore were paid to these fakes so if we were to do a if we were to do an inflation adjusted amount to today april 2024 that's about 35 lakh crore wow and apart from these that have been named that savio has just listed out there were non existent people who were non existent completely non existent people who were recruited as teachers in government schools who are getting salaries and all kinds of benefits they got paid 6.12 lakh crores between 2004 and 2014 the current value of which is 15.64 lakh crores so once uh, let's follow the process through once these fakes were detected how quickly did the government act and make sure that no more pilferage happens on some of these detections 24 hours everything was deleted within 24 hours and after that everything was made aadhar linked so it's it's almost impossible to fake an aadhar card so in the list that savio just read out there is no aadhar card right correct because aadhar is biometric based i I've, i've heard multiple pe- multiple aadhar cards per individual though Uh, because they go to see there was a time when aadhar was not completely computerized and you could get an aadhar card in bengal you could get it in delhi and and these two were uh, you know they had separate databases something like that have you guys looked into that so those three are photocopy fakes right they they've been photoshopped hmm I, i'm not aware but I, i'm just saying that if if you didn't have everything computerized okay one thing that i do know in the initial days all uh, aadhar cards did not have biometrics even yeah. even fingerprint there there is retinal scan which is for life there is fingerprint and there is i think no non biometric aadhar card also so that's uh, why these are, yeah 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 so that's why the government has come up with a new rule that every 3 years the aadhar has to be verified and i'll just i'm reading out from the dashboard so out of 1.3966 uh, billion aadhar cards issued 929.474 million have been uh, very updated with the updated data so the process is going on within the next 6 to 8 months all aadhar cards will be updated and those which are not updated will be cancelled I see. My mother, I for see. example, got a got a uh, SMS message saying that you have 60 days to update your Aadhaar card. You know, there's one problem with this: the new new places where they are accepting, you know, renewals. Uh, once a person reaches 85, 86, in the 80s, the fingerprints just vanish. There are no no more fingerprints for you. And when they try to put it, it doesn't scan properly. and my mother i mean she's been trying to get a new aadhar card for close to a year and and i still it's still work in progress i mean th- there are things that need to be still done i wish everybody would get retinal scan because retinal scan is for life your retinal uh, signature doesn't change yeah. throughout your life uh, but it's of course it's a little bit more involved than a fingerprint uh, reader i I'm, i'm just giving being constructive in my criticism here Uh, sure. but so aadhar card has become your foundational platform based on which everything else flows up correct correct and at least the at least like for example a uh, couple of people that we spoke to one of them in uh, niti ayog and another person in the pm's economic advisory council 
they are extremely confident that currently uh, the beneficiaries who are receiving, uh, you know, government grants, etc., subsidies, etc., there are less than three percent fates. I see. I see. Now, if you now let's the, take a, you know, let's take a look. First. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Sir. If you come back to a data point that Amit just spoke about, as far as beneficiaries are concerned, let me just give you that data point. You see, the annual direct benefit transfers during the UPA era was uh, to be precise 7,367.7 crores. This was in the UPA era, right? Now you come into the NDA era and just imagine what the figure is. 5,93,843 crores. That is 7,960%. 7,960 percent of effectiveness of how the direct benefit transfers have moved on. In fact, Amit can throw light on it. Um, uh, Amit, over to you. Yeah, sorry, I saw, saw you. What was the question again? No, on the direct benefit transfers during the Modi era, we've got 5,93,843 crores. Mm. That has been the annual direct benefit transfers, right? Mm. But in the UPA era, it was only 7,367.7 crores. So this huge uh, lacune, again, is linked to in, into streamlining, uh, streamlining the direct benefit transfers using the Aadhaar itself. Yeah, because one of the primary reasons for this is because in the direct benefits transfer, the money goes to the bank account. Yeah. Whereas in the UPA era, 97% of the government uh, money was going to uh, gram panchayats and uh, it was going to local bo urban local bodies and gram panchayats and then getting siphoned off. You know, Rajiv Gandhi himself said 85% leakage. See, uh, importantly, we have calculated the total leakage during UPA not at Rajiv Gandhi's 85% figure, but at only 25%. At 25%, it comes to 61 lakh crore. Wow. Um, viewers, one small request to all of you. We have about uh, 265 or so watching. We have about 130 likes. So one in two are liking this program. You know what? People can cry hoarse saying why they should vote for them. Instead, they could actually point to all the things that the Modi government has done. I'm talking about all the BJP candidates. Guys, make sure that this video reaches out to all those of you who still have time on your hands to canvas. Of course, uh, in, in Tamil Nadu, it's less than 48 hours. But make sure as much as possible that this goes to the people who are on the hitting the streets, on the road, meeting with people, showing that, look, there is so many things. At least let's try to have a cheat sheet of five or ten. So if I could just impose on you one thing, your opening statement of ten bullet points, right? right. Share that with me, and we'll make an infographic, okay? And that will be something that maybe people can print and then and show it. Like, look, this is what we have done. There is so much wastage that has been removed. Now I'm coming yeah. to an important question here. Uh, so just give me the data, Savio. We'll take it from there. No worries. I'm coming to okay, an important so, question here. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to say something? No, no go ahead. Sorry. I'll send so, you the data. So, right away. Thank you so much. So what I wanted to ask both of you gentlemen is 17 lakh fake voter cards were unearthed in West Bengal alone. I'm sure some similar numbers are coming up at, elsewhere in the country. See, West Bengal is a, a fake rich state in the sense Every time elections are held, it goes through the entire seven places. So they are the, essentially what it means is that management of elections is a science that is taken to a very high level in West Bengal. Uh, it, it's, it's brutal. That's all I can say. Now, do you think because of all these fakes being removed that uh, the election results could also be having some amount of impact on this because of this? I'll give it to Amit first and then to Savio. So I, I belong to Bengal and I have a lot of relatives. 
I have a lot of relatives there. I I, I grew up there. I, I've lived most of my life in Bangalore, but I grew up in Bengal. I lived there for 15 years. Uh, you know, I was there last month for five days. And even Bengali Muslims who are not immigrants from Bangladesh, even they want, they're not going to vote TMC this time. They're going to vote for BJP. Bengali Muslims are going to vote BJP. I am willing to take a bet that out of 43 seats in West Bengal, the BJP is crossing 50%. They're getting more than 22. Correct. See, the, 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 these lies can only be peddled for so long. And um, Savia, your response. I mean, I, I want to know more about Tamil Nadu is equally bad in the sense that they, they, they have very scientific ways of rigging. One of the things I'm told, for example, is that uh, doesn't matter which election, by 3.30 in the afternoon, when polling kind of slowly comes down because of the heat and everything, they just essentially drive out the booth agents of all parties one party takes over per booth, the 1500 uh, votes per booth, about 200. They know exactly who has not shown up to vote. All those people, you know, they just come in and they just pad it in one way or the other. This, the DMK and ADMK have perfected over years. Now with EVMs, maybe it is harder. Maybe uh, CRPF is now going to be inside the station so that they don't, nobody messes around with this. It's a completely smoothly oiled operation. One can say, oh, this is state government run election, therefore it is possible. No, this is central government, it's going to be different. They have mastered it. Savio, your thoughts on this pilferage that happens on election day. Do you think that the Modi government has effectively countered all these things? Because if that happens, my friend, it doesn't matter you pay 10, 20,000 or 10,000 per vote. The actual result will surprise everyone. Over to you. You know, I'm pretty confident that the current system that the Election Commission of India has as far as controlling elections are through the EVMs and the VVPAT systems are foolproof for now. There have not been any cases of tampering that uh, have rigged the EVMs, even though that the oppositions say that EVMs get rigged. It's funny that the oppositions don't highlight it when they win elections like in Karnataka. Right. Of course. But let me give you let me give you one more data point, and I think that's very important because a lot of people during the opposition have been talking about job job creation and unemployment. That's that's in, in India at this point of time, right? So the jobs created in the formal sector, and I'll let Amit tell you about the informal sector. But the jobs created in the formal sector during the UPA time was eighty one point three three two million. In the Modi uh, leadership time. It is 266.739 million, which is a 228% rise in job creation. Now, the other thing that Amit will talk about is predominantly unorganized sector. This is the formal so, sector I'm talking about. The most important is when Modi talked about creating two crore jobs per year, he never said, is it going to be formal sector or informal sector? Correct. But he has created 2.6674 crore jobs per year only in the formal sector. Hmm. So he's exceeded when, his target by 33%. Only in the say, formal sector. When you say formal sector, are these tax paying people? These are people who are registered with uh, EPF and NPS. Okay. So, Explain that for us, please. Uh, the employee pension fund, right? So the minimum qualification criteria for, uh, so they have to be taxpayers. I mean, not necessarily taxpayers because they may be under the seven lakh. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's bracket. fine. I, what, what I meant, I think, sorry, I mean, what I meant was that uh, formal sector is something where there is a payroll, somebody is, you know, yes. uh, showing yeah, up yeah. for work and things like that. Not yeah. in, in informal, what happens is, People could be having three jobs all at the same time because not each one is a 40 hour week job. Uh, you, you'll be doing, you know, dog walking, for example. You could also be managing a uh, coconut water shop in the morning. You, you see what I'm saying? I know many people like that. They, they, they run a coconut water business in the morning on the beach in Chennai. People who come for walking, they come have coconut water. From there, they ask, okay, um, I, I need this particular limousine service or something. 
this guy is noting down okay i today i'm going to get four cars out to four different families because they need them so after 10 a.m this person is running his cab stuff running down and, and making sure that uh, all the cabs are made available to those who want because you are establishing that one-on-one -on -one trust by just selling somebody coconut water in the mornings so these right. kinds of jobs are also there back to you amit sorry i uh, uh no, digressed you so yeah so these these 266.74 uh, million are only epfo members that have been added and nps members that have been added in the national pension scheme right apart from that to capture the very thing that you said shri about informal sector people having multiple jobs etc etc the modi government came out with the e shram portal and asked unorganized sector people to register on the e shram portal so that they can become eligible for various government benefits now you can only register on the e shram portal with an aadhar card so it has to be aadhar seeded and so there are uh, millions of people registered on e shram but i'll just talk about the numbers who are yeah so there are 295.34 million people who are registered on e shram so that means they are gainfully employed right i mean they have some some work and there are this includes farmers the 295.34 million includes farmers in fact 58% of them are farmers but there are people who have still not registered on e shram a lot of auto rickshaw drivers or cart pullers or you know street side vendors pan walas etc etc that number is 45.484 sorry that number is 58.9 million who are not yet registered and then domestic household help right people who work in you know as a cleaning lady or as a uh, you know as a cook or uh, some some other job in a in a domestic household who are not registered in ishram that's another 45.484 million then you have the micro sector where there are where the organization has less than 5 employees so where it has less than 5 employees they are not registering with epf or with nps so that's another uh, 143.6 million people who are working as employees in the micro sector so when you add up all of this the number of people gainfully employed who are earning a monthly income is 934.383 million right now if you take the population as of 10 days ago 15 days ago and we are using worldometer and uh, population pyramid because they update data worldometer in fact updates data on a millisecond basis the number of the total population of india aged 15 to 62 uh as of 31st march was 957.421 million what that translates to basically is that we have 23.038 million unemployed people now i'm not saying 20 it's a joke 23.038 million is still a large number but as a unemployment percentage it is only 2.406% not the I mean, the other day there is this uh, spokesperson of Samajwadi Party, Ghansham something, Ghansham Tiwari, right? Have you Ghans? Yes. He he is supposed to be a Cornell educated guy. He says there is eighty three percent unemployment in India. On a on a yeah. national. Yeah, eighty three percent unemployment. What what are the reasons why I don't go to debates anymore? Is to put up with something like this where people lie through their teeth. It's just. abominable it just beats your mind but blows your mind that people still watch one hour to get all these lies peddled to them uh, back to you amit that's that's another reason why modi ji doesn't do press conferences right because idiots like him will be there in the you know in the asking questions stupid questions like that so 2.406% is an extremely important figure when you take the top 10 countries in the world and you compare their a uh, top 10 economies in the world and you compare their unemployment rates right 
so the japan is better than us they have a 2.3% unemployment rate not not far better than us slightly better than us germany has 3.3% us has 3.8% uk has 4.6% china 5.6% Canada 6.3%, France 7.3%, Italy 8% and Brazil 8.2%. So out of the top 10 economies in the world, India has the second highest employment rate. And I will not be surprised, Sri, and I, this is not, not coming from the book, it's coming from the heart. Four years from now, mark my words, 2028, we will be importing labor. Wow. I think that is already happening though, Amit, because if you take a look at uh, some of the functions that are being done today, for example, um, uh, you know, masonry construction in South India, uh, Southern India, I should not say South India. No, no, no. Southern India, the construction work, uh, those people who lay out the, uh, there's some essential parts when your foundation floor or every floor as you build it, there are specialists that come from one region in India. They are the only ones available. The locals have somehow, you know, either risen up in economic scale and gone on to other tasks or something like that. But you have these kinds of things. Same way, plumbers, all of southern India, they all come from a small place in Orissa. Why? I don't know. But that seems to be the case. So India is already feeling the pinch, in my opinion. Plus, I think household health, you'll see a lot of people who are from either Bangladesh or Rohingyas now, uh, who, you know, they'll say that they are from Malda. That's a general statement. Just throw it in. We are from Malda. <laughs> so this yeah, 45, 45 lakh Nepalese, Nepalese working in India. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Including security guards. So that's four and a half million. Right. Now, Which is now not even around. Lay it out for us. See, there are two things here. Uh, Somebody who has come on a work visa is equivalent to what I would say, green card in the United States. You, ca you can do everything, but you cannot work. India needs to get to that point. How soon do you think they can get to that point? To the point of where we will be having a green card and we will, we will be inviting global workers. That's why I said 2028. But see, I want to take this opportunity to share some more data, right? Uh, coming, you know, moving away from unemployment. Yeah. You know, the two or three things that Modi is best known for, one of them is infrastructure development, right? So again, according to the opposition spokespeople, Modi has not done no development, right? So again, like Savio said, data doesn't lie. The total investment in infrastructure, and I'm giving comparisons between UK era and Modi era, 322.8% higher. Now, somebody will say, oh, but also the GDP was higher and the costs were higher. Yeah. So total investment in infrastructure as a percentage of GDP, 89.1% higher. More airport, passenger, airport passenger capacity, 375.4% higher. Track, track length, train track length added in 10 years, 397.4% higher. Track doubling, tripling, or quadrupling, 369.8% higher. Track electrification, 456.3% higher. The number of uh, Linke Hausmann, uh, uh, the LHB, the, uh, I'm, I'm, the German uh, coaches, Linke, Linke Hoffman, I'm forgetting the, what the B stands for. The number of coaches produced. In 10 years, the UPA produced 2,584 coaches and the Modi government has produced 32,662. So that's 1,164% higher. It's, it's the same India. It's the same factories. Cities with metro rail from 5 to 21. Metro lay, uh, track length added 305.8% higher. National highways length 274.7% higher. Expressway length 445.6% higher. Number of universities, the UPA built 333, the Modi government has built 576. Power generation capacity added 
79.3% more the power transfer capacity between regions and that's very important because some regions had excess power and some regions are short of power right so the the inter regional power transfer capacity added 225% higher solar power capacity added 2931% higher wind power capacity added 1950% higher the number of png connections domestic 460% higher urban homes built by the government of india in the pm awas yojana 1056% higher and household latrines built per day 477% higher modi did no development right shri well where did the money come from all this i mean thank you for asking that question so uh, very very important to share this data where did the money come from and that's that's the that's the most important thing right they didn't the modi government did not print currency uh, so the personal income tax collections 319.5 percent higher so it tripled okay it quadrupled 319.5 percent higher so when you do the multiplication oh, okay, okay right. 4.195 yeah hmm. corporate income tax 138.4 percent higher uh, there was no gst in uh, the upa era but only between gst was introduced in in uh, july 2018 so if you take the first full year of gst sorry gst was introduced in july 2016 so we have not taken 2017 and we have not taken 2018 we have taken 2019 from 2019 to 2024 financial year gst collection has been 104.4% higher so basically the government got about 13 and a half lakh crore more per year on an average as taxes and and on top of that windfall from like for example getting crude at a very low price or from selling wheat at a much higher price during the time of scarcity like for example the onset of ukraine russia war i think those things went into the coffers too because those that's essentially grain sitting in fci that got sold out exported at a high price uh, and uh, i didn't see the modi government pass on the benefits of a lower crude cost to the people i think they just kept it kept it for other usages which is fine but in the, my opinion but it's not a great saving shri because the average price at which the upa bought crude over 10 years compared to the average price that the nda or modi government bought crude for the last 10 years if you look if you look at the rupee cost right you can't look at the dollar cost because at the end of the day our right. money is in rupees it's only 4.1% less hmm. why is that because the modi government signed advance contracts oh i see so i thought it was 50 50 spot purchase versus signed contracts so at different percentage. stages at different percentages but yeah close to 50 50 because oil prices yeah. also fluctuated right in the last two years the oil prices were very high ever since yes. the russia ukraine war broke out the oil price has been very high yes we got cheap oil from russia but that was only for 11 months some of these things are not known to the people in uh, many still still think that india is continuing to get uh, oil from russia with rupees i think that pipe stopped a while ago yeah correct great uh, this has been a fascinating session uh, gentlemen we have a few questions from our viewers uh, i'm sure once your book comes out this will be like a must carry for all the people who want to go and talk about what good bjp has done nothing like taking a book and showing go to this page and look at this one point you wanted to... 
Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, I want to. I want to make a point primarily because uh, a lot of these opposition leaders have been talking about Modi being anti-minority, and that's the kind of uh, press that Modi gets uh, internationally. That's targeting the minorities. So let me give you a data point. Okay, so loan dispersed to minorities in the UPA time was two thousand. 33.35 crores upa supposed to be the protectors of the minority in their time in modi's time the loans disbursed to minorities are 6215.64 crores which is 2205.7% more is Modi really anti-minority is question number one. Let me give you another data point, okay? If you look at female minority students, okay? In the UPA era, the female minority students for the year 2014 was 1.044 million. In 2024, it is 1.711 million which is a 63.9% jump, which means the strategy of Prime Minister Modi, while it's been to empower women, he's also very strategically in the interest of women in the minorities, empowering minority women as well, to get them their rights, their rights to education and their rights to better life. I'll add to what Thank you, sir. Sir. Yeah. I'll take only 15 seconds. So apart from the loans, the loans have to be repaid, right? Let's talk about scholarships given to minority students. Scholarships. 44.35 million pre-matric scholarships. 44.35. We are talking about minority population. Post-matric scholarships, 5.706 million. And other scholarships given to merit uh, to uh, minority students, 1.002 million. Wow. Uh, one last question before I throw open the floor for questions from our viewers. How many of these changes are irreversible? Well, you can't unbuild a highway you can't take away an electrified the rail track. You can't, uh, you know, take the fuel pumps off the aircraft that have been added or, you know, shrink the size of the airports. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't go and break everybody's uh, household tap water connections. So I would say as far as infrastructure is concerned, almost everything is, is not reversible. As far as the government's 454 schemes are concerned, if tomorrow somebody else were to come into power, they could they could make it zero. Yeah, I'll give you one more point, Sri. This is very important, and because you cater to a lot of the Indians that live outside of India as well, right? So stranded Indians evacuated during the UPA era. This is interesting. I'm I'm, I'm not kidding. Okay, is seventeen thousand three hundred and fifty great work by the UPA. Yeah, people, 17,350 people. Okay. okay. In Modi's tenure, the number of stranded Indians evacuated from abroad are 18, 18 lakhs. Uh, no, 18 months, million. Uh, 18 million, sorry. 18 million, 333,348. That means 18.3 million stranded Indians have been evacuated from abroad. Yeah, but Savio, you know, that's, that's a little, we have been a little naughty in that part because <laughs> COVID, the COVID evacuation number is included in that. And UPA okay. did not have to deal with COVID. Right. Yes, I was racking you... my brains. The biggest evacuation that took place was Ukraine. Well, there were 40,000 students. So I was wondering how, how this uh, number came about to be in millions. So thanks for clarifying that. I think uh, we should take some questions now. We're already 49 minutes into this talk. This is the most important talk that many of our viewers, normal viewership is much higher than this. However, this doesn't qualify as election gossip or election 
update. So people are probably thinking, well, there is some. Anyway, this is going to go viral, I assure you, because all our friends are going to be forwarding this to their respective constituencies and those people who need to know. Now let's take some questions now, please. Surjit Sandaraj, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. Kartik Sundar Raman, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Magnet Ranga wants to know, Namaskar, biggest failure of BJP is the lack of info on all it has achieved and surely this government has done great work. Congress has done precisely little in the past but managed huge publicity. One of you can take this question. Amit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is something that we talked about earlier, right? I mean, the Congress uses uh, people, you know, senior uh, Supreme Court lawyers like Abhishek Manu Singhvi or Kapil Sibal earlier, now he's quit the Congress, or a Salman Khurshid or Chidambaram, you know, people like that to uh, to speak on their behalf. Even Jairam Ramesh is a good articulator, although he never sits on the right aircraft seat. He's always sitting on mine. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who, you know, who does BJP use? BJP uses Sardar R.P. Singh. I was so upset yesterday with his answers on the election bonds that I actually wanted to send a message to Hardeep Singh Puri saying, you know, if you need to find a Sardar because you want to show that you are, you know, have, you have a lot of minorities, I'm sure you can find Sardars who can communicate better. But the, the BJP has got, you know, extremely lousy spokespeople. And, uh, you know, the Prime Minister himself needs a media secretary. And uh, when he launches this book, I'm confident he's going to launch this book. I'm going to recommend to him, I'm going to volunteer nine months of service to him free of cost. I'll move to Delhi, yeah. act as his media secretary. I can't do it for longer than nine months. I'm, I'm getting old. I'm going to be 59 soon. Uh, but uh, I'm willing to train a, a bunch of youngsters to become spokespersons for the PMO as well as, uh, you know, the BJP. They really, really need... I mean, there are one or two people who have data, but they are obnoxious. I mean, Savio knows the lady that I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, some of them have actually challenged me on my knowledge of economics and I threw the challenge down. I said, let's go while uh, live and you tell me what you know about economics and I'll tell you what I know. And you are a trained economist, I'm not. I still bet that I'll win. So anyway, that person ran away. This is par for course. Um, but next but Magnet, I, I hope Magnet, I hope we answered your question. Yes, I think we did. Uh, Manoj Soma wants to know, Amit Ji, is there any BJP government getting petrol under GST, sir? Uh, so this is a very big challenge because the GST council has got uh, 36 people. You know, 30... Uh, I think he was uh, the first. Right. I think he joined from the one union. one representative from each state and and union territory. Sorry, the union territories are not there. So twenty nine states, plus only one representative of the central government. So there are thirty representatives, and each has one vote. The central government doesn't have any extra votes. And the way the GST council works is you have to have unanimous decision. So there are four or five states which are blocking this. Wow. Next one. Thank you, Jahangir Gotla. Uh, PM Modi on ANI the other day praised the income tax payer in enabling all the investments into infrastructure and funding all the food subsidies. Yes, I, I listened to that interview. Very fascinating. He said that you are you may be thinking that I'm getting nothing, but you're getting a lot of punya from, from doing what you are doing. Your money is what is, you know, turning on the gas some somebody's place and things like that. Very well, nicely. Actually, I'm not able to hear you. Uh, are you able to hear me, Savio? I can. Yeah. So uh, I think he's just making a general statement. Jahangir is. Uh, if you want to add to that, feel free. And then I'm sure Amit will join back. Well, uh, you know, the most most important thing for us to understand, uh, and it relates to the question that was there previously, the first question, is that the information is there. Okay. The information is available on the government website. We have gone beyond and looked at information from other sources as well. But what the government needs to really do is to make that information available more real time and more documented so people 
even within their spokespersons or other leaders, are able to quantify that and talk about uh, debates based on data. Most of the debates that are happening today, if you see the kind of discourse we have been doing over the last uh, week or so or more with data, right? We People are not able to uh, answer or counter the questions that we are raising based on data. The whole idea, Amit and I wanted to do this book, is because we personally face a lot of resistance in our in our circles, whether it's it's our friend circle, whether it's our community circles, right? So how do you challenge somebody? You challenge somebody based on data. And if this country needs to go ahead and Prime Minister Modi needs to move on for the next couple of uh, years as well and take India forward, that the most important thing is the percolation of that data to the common man in the in the language or in the essence of which he understands right today let's say for example when you talk to minorities and i face a lot of that you know the the bjp is communal today i had a priest uh, get into a discussion and me saying that bjp is communal i said please please explain then he spoke about you know incidents i said how many incidents are there as for the case the case that is in court there is roughly about uh, 545 incidents over there out of that, 50% have not been reported. There's a case filed that Christians are in danger, out of which 50% of the cases that have been listed down are not filed in a police station. Out of that many numbers, there are so many, another 50% is only got to do with property dispute. So the real actual cases out of the 545 is roughly about 120, 130 cases which are being investigated in the respective police station. So because of that, are you saying the entire minority population of Christians are in danger? So data never lies. My advice to the government and to people supporting the BJP is to counter with facts and data. Thank you, Amit. We got uh, rudely interrupted. Go ahead and finish your thought on this question, Amit. You are coming in with something. Oh, sorry. What was that? No, no. Did, did you want to add? Can we go to the previous question? I think maybe it was the previous question that Amit was answering, and then it it uh, no, this one. The, the line dropped. Okay, let's let's just do this. Keep moving. Um, is there any BJP government getting petrol under GST? You are finishing up your thoughts on this one. You said four. No, no. Four so states I already answered. Are... Yeah, I already answered that, saying that unless there is a consensus with all the state finance ministers. It's impossible. Uh, why? Why just petrol? Even uh, alcohol needs to come under GST. Yes, I mean, both then, of them are. Then yeah. The liquor scam would have never happened, right? <laughs> very true. Very true. Let's go to the next question, please. Uh, Manoj Das wants to know. Also, talk about mudra loans. I let Amit go first. Uh, can you? Can you? Uh, so, Manoj, what do you want to know about mudra loans? Uh, Manoj, if you could just expand on that, I think they want to know the numbers. How many people benefited from it? Right. So uh, basically, uh, 28.095 lakh crore, 28.095 trillion rupees has been dispersed to uh, 477.04 million people. Uh, but a lot of them are people who got a second loan and a third loan. And unfortunately, uh, we are not able to get hold of data as to how many unique individuals got the loan you have the overall number but not the individuals got it Correct. got it understood. Correct. Understood. so but one yeah. but one one other thing is that the average size of the mudra loan in financial year 2016 15 16 was 38117 rupees and in the financial year that just ended was 80840 rupees so basically wow. what is happening is the second loans and the third loans are rising and the second loan is only given to somebody who has promptly repaid yeah. the first loan. So there is uh, there is check there to make sure that uh, it's not frittered away. Correct. And one more important statistic on mudra before we close that question is 71% of the uh, beneficiary uh, the, of the borrowers are women. You know, grandma wisdom trumps everything else. Think about it. They said gold is what... I want to bet on and in fact 
they even wore it on their their body so that they didn't have to worry about when i go out to work if somebody comes and steals it from my home amazing wisdom just think about that and apply it to today's context thank you so much next question please uh, srinivas vitala thank you so much for your generous donation next one youtube wala mola <laughs> funny name thank you youtube wala maulana vikshit bharat also needs a strong gdp per capita ucc and population control will not be brought for our appeasement and no matter however much bjp does for the qom will not let the trust deficit to bridge while enjoying all these i think is making more of a statement we can agree with it or disagree with it let's have your word first <laughs> well I'm, I'm, it's it's a bit complicated because i i think uh, what he's trying to say in, in in a roundabout way is that everybody should be treated the same way that's all well i think that's the most beautiful aspect of prime minister modi you know the true you ask 99% of the people on the road you know out of the 100 right i ask 100 people and you ask them for a definition of secular i am willing to bet a free willem pencil box to anybody who can prove me wrong but 99 times they 99% of the people will say when you ask them for a definition of secular they will say secular means to accept all religions the clinical definition of secular is the acceptance of no religion in matters of governance it only means that the state looks at you as a citizen and if there's somebody today who's looking at you as a citizen then that's why modi does not look with who's got the toilet you know the toilets are for everybody whether they are hindus muslims christians parsis jains it doesn't matter the tap water connection your religion does not matter so i think we we moving towards a bharat we are all bharatiyas we are all all sons and daughters of bharat mata i think i think the congress colonial mentality over the last 10 years has been washed away some people live with it we can't help it but by and large many of us as indians are moving ahead as far thank you sir you amit i'd like you to answer this and then we can have a round out like for example you can say when do you expect the book to hit the store shelves and so on and so forth over to you so the only thing i want to add i think savio has pretty articulately covered it but the only thing i would like to add to molana saheb i'm calling him saheb uh, without knowing whether he is older than me or younger than me but uh, there are in the in the uk uh, there are four municipal councils four four towns or cities where there are sign boards on highways leading up to those cities saying non muslims not allowed i don't think in any of the expressways or highways that modi has built there is a sign saying muslims not allowed i mean can you share the photographs or videos of this because i'd like to plaster this i have some really nasty elements in the united states now uh, hyping up the same drivel that you know india used to do inside go ahead sir Sure. So I, I, that that's it. I, I... Okay. I think one more question is stuck in. Uh, you know, I mean, keep that in the back of your mind as to when the book is going to be available, probably, and and uh, just an idea for where to expect. You're going to be on Amazon. You can just say that we will be on Amazon and things like that. Whichever site you have chosen. Srinivas Vithala wants to know: Is India Inc. not investing to generate employment? What is the way we can increase employment? अरे यार पूरा कहानी सुनकर क्यों इस तरह पूछ रहे हो सिनेमास जी? I mean, we said that it's only 2.6 percent, only just a little bit behind Japan, and Japan has stopped growing a long time ago. They stopped growing a long time ago. My goodness, they they have a huge population problem, or not having population problem. Uh, you know, is that why you want to take that question? Yeah. Yeah. No, I I want to. Uh, draw the attention of your viewers to one point. You know, there was a time when terrorism in in India was was something that people were very very uh, nervous about, very afraid of, and that was one of the points that was not leading to very strong economic stability as far as India is concerned in some pockets, right? So, if you look at the total terror incidents in J and K during the UPA era, that was about ten thousand six hundred and ninety. in the modi era right up to 2023 it's about 3467 total terror incidents in jnk that happened 
if you look at every terror aspect if i can tell you what's happened in in uh, the maoist or the leftist that's down to almost zero right amit if i if i'm not mistaken that's down to zero so you've got a whole lot of terrorism related uh, active uh, you know control the fight against terrorism has been phenomenal by this government they are a stable uh, a stable economy requires a stable region and that is what is happening so people are having confidence right and and i think people need to understand that that the effort of the government in controlling minor things like terrorism i'll give you another data point you know narcotics during the upa era that was confiscated was valued at 768 crores around that much the narcotics confiscated in the in the uh, in modi's time over the last uh, nine years right up to december 31st 2023 was 22000 crore where is 768 crores and where is 22000 crore in terms of value of narcotics these are things that people don't look at but these bring stability to to a country and i also so I ask people you know it's good that savio talked about the terrorism part i ask people that you discuss unemployment and jobs and economy and uh, you know uh, cost of a plane ticket and this and that and everything but if you if you are not alive then it doesn't matter right in the up right. era there were 47 there were terror incidents in 47 cities outside the northeast region and outside of kashmir so 47 cities in what was mainstream india during the upa period of course modi had brought northeast and kashmir in mainstream india in that part of the country zero not a single terrorism incident where is lashkar e toiba correct Thank you so much, gentlemen, and uh, that has been a wonderful discussion. And uh, viewers, all I can tell you is one small request: please forward this to your WhatsApp groups, especially those who are in the heat of the battle. In uh, I think 26th is when Kerala is going to elections. Could be wrong about this. And 19th is when Tamil Nadu is going to election. I think Bengal is doing all seven phases. So there is some part in Bengal who is going to uh, polls every on every polling day. So please make sure. that you share this link among all your groups and and at least uh, you know try to get an idea that there is so much that has been accomplished but has not been published and public uh, you know publicly disseminated for you to understand and sometimes you know you also get information overload but we concentrated it today so that people know that salient points will be there thank you both gentlemen and wish you all the best amit your information on when the books going to hit the stores please so the publisher needs a minimum of 9 weeks so i'm 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 thinking end of june and and uh, any idea where it will be available so that i mean what we will do closer to the book release you know have the actual book in your hand i'm sure it's going to be you know well back paperback or hardbound whatever uh, this is a hardbound it's screaming for a hardbound in my opinion um and and we can come back and talk about this because i'm sure by that time you would have reconciled some of these things how many poor points yeah, you put no see i have already got a couple of universities that have been asking me for copies of the book which i will tell amit a little later because i that a point of time i didn't tell him but the point is everybody wants data that's what people are not understanding you know the young yes. india the educated india wants to look at data and do a comparative analysis they want to be informed and that's what we are doing we're just keeping them informed yeah so it's Thank going to be gentlemen. out on uh, it's going to be out on amazon probably 10 days before the uh, printed book is out so I, i'm i'm thinking yeah. around around 15th of june when it will be the ebook will be available on amazon but as far as the printed books are concerned i think all leading bookstores in the country are going to have it because this is a multinational publisher that we are working with wonderful wonderful all the best gentlemen and i'm sure this book is going to be a roaring success thank you once again viewers please like share and subscribe to our channel don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications namaskar thank you namaskar